idea was to go down through time, basically, as bankers and loan out to countries and eventually take those countries over through debt, create empires, uh, fund standing armies, make sure you get a return on, on the funding, of course. And war is awfully good for empire building and for bankers. And eventually, uh, once you've settled on your, your final plan and you've standardized the world into the same so-called democratic system, that means a system where government becomes totalitarian, uh, it runs through a central banking system which borrows money from private banks or lenders, uh, then that's what the, the, that's, you've made it, you see, that's what they want. And right now they're finishing off the last countries that don't have the, the, the they don't borrow from um, outsiders, they don't borrow from private banks, and in fact Libya, even from the 70s, was debt-free. That's the only country they could possibly say that at the time. Anyway, we're watching them being standardized into this uh, wonderful banker's utopia and an academic uh, utopia as well because academia is part of the military industrial complex now with all the incredible grants they get for science and weaponry and so on. It's put through uh, different professors and universities who uses, they use the grants to please their bosses and find what their bosses really want. But... People, still people think of getting something back. Like, let's go back to a previous time. And I've, I've often said to them, what previous time do you want to go back to, apart from hundreds of years ago, when maybe you had some kind of chance, when, when for instance, the U.S. or Canada were, was pretty well unexplored, and there was no government so officials chasing you and so on for cash or whatever. Uh, that's about the only little breathing space there was. And once they bring in this odd thing called civilization and progress, uh, you're all under the rulership of panels and boards and committees and then governments. So you can't really go back. And even in the U.S., they keep talking about getting back, getting America back. But a back to what time with the corruption of the FDR when he changed the system and got congratulated by the communists for, for bringing a very similar system in, that they were that massive work gangs doing roads, forests, and so on, all wearing army uniforms. That was their make-work projects. And they were doing the same thing in the Soviet Union at the same time. So what part do you want to go back to when the banks didn't get uh, a stranglehold on the nations? You'd have to go back to the founding, really, at least with the American Revolution, and you'd have to plug every single hole that was left there for the bankers to come in. Every single one would have to be utterly plugged with, with no amendments on them, basically, at all. And um, the Bill of Rights really should be uh, at the top of everything with uh, listing all the rights of the, the citizenry. That's the only thing you could have done because they've all been ignored now. With the Council on Foreign Relations published years ago, they'd have to do an end run acro- around the Constitution. In other words, keep building new laws, bridging over the Constitution until that becomes normal. And that's what they have done over the years. So you can't go back to a corrupt time. It was just as corrupt in previous times. It's just that from maybe World War II, then to World War II onwards, for 20 years they left more cash in the ordinary working people's pockets. That's really the, the, the break that they had. After that, it was time to move the factories and so on out of uh, the country to China. And through the 80s and the 90s, they did that with the World Trade Organization that all the leaders signed on to because your leaders have never served the general public. They belong to a global society, a global club. That's why they're picked and presented in front of you to vote for. Carl Quigley again went through that scenario in Tragedy and Hope. And you've got to read the Anglo-American establishment as well to understand it all. Now, many people too try to get people indignant. I've tried that myself in the past. It doesn't really work because when people are fairly happy and lazy, and they've never had so much entertainment, regardless of their income, uh, cheap entertainment, they, they generally will go along with whatever's happening. As long as they've enough there to go to the, the, the bars and pick up somebody at the weekends, that type of stuff, they're, they're quite content. And this has all been thought out at think tanks too. They keep the pulse on, of the people uh, constantly. They're always taking the pulse to see how they're accepting things. And they know exactly how far to push it. I remember reading years ago that uh, when the Frankfurt School set up as, as an arm of communism, specialized branch, uh, that um, Lenin and, and then Stalin had said that in the West, the people were simply not poor enough 
not disgruntled enough for a revolution. And so they, they hoped to, they, they used the Great Depression to a great extent, hoping the people would rise up and then, and then actually they'd jump in at the end and install a communist government. So that's what they always do. You have a little coup at the end and they jump over all the guys that have been doing the fighting and, and grab the government. And that's still, by the way, something that certain um, Marxists are hoping for today. That even put news out there to even patriots, uh, people and so on. But uh, at the moment, of course, you, you don't have that. You don't have the extreme poverty. You, you don't have elements of starvation creeping in, as evident as it's been in the past, uh, times of, of depression. And, of course, that's why they're rampaging ahead with every single part of this brave new world, uh, Orwellian world uh, of a globalism and Post, a post-democratic system. They keep using democracy, but democracy now means post-democratic. Democracy means ruled by experts today. That's what it means. And the biggest groups are listened to. If you don't belong to a massive group that's authorized and politically correct, like a massive NGO funded by a foundation, then you have no voice at all. And that was even predicted over a hundred years ago in Britain with those who were writing about what really was democracy at that time and where would it go in the future. So there's nothing new in any of this when you've studied your history. So indignation doesn't even get the people up when they're too comfortable too. In fact, it upsets them because they have been um, taught generation by generation uh, through as liberalism as Yuri Bezmenov said, the next KGB guy says, they've been contaminated. And by that he, he meant that they, they didn't know what was right or wrong anymore. In fact, anything was okay. That's what we, everyone's been taught in school. And it's been taught again through philosophy and through uh, even, even the junior schools as well. But it's still basically a philosophy um, of moral relativism. Uh, there's, there's techniques in how to there's even two kits that the teachers can buy, even for junior school, and how to teach it and get it across. Where you start off with a premise, and children see things in very black and white, something's really wrong or it's really bad, and then you get them to question their premise. Well, in this situation, what would you do then? And then you, you, you just simply break it up until, yeah, they start to question their judgment on everything. That's exactly what government has done with generations. And a country that's morally bankrupt cannot stand either, and Yuri Bezmenov also knew that as well. It was all brought down deliberately because people who are narcissistic and hedonistic uh, do not help others and they don't care what's happening to others either. Bertrand Russell exposed that back in the 30s and 40s. He said that's a system we shall bring in for the public because they won't stand together. That's already happened. So as I say, when they're hedonistic and narcissistic, and they've got lots and lots of entertainment and lots of things to amuse themselves with, an endless internet of nonsense to, 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 to surf over forever and ever, uh, then they will not stand up and do anything about what's coming down the pike, even though it's in front of their faces. In fact, uh, they have been taught to, to oppose any negativism. Anything that's true, anything that matters that might affect them negatively down the road, uh, they actually call negative in a different sense. It's bad news. It's called negative to them. Don't tell me that stuff. I don't want to hear it. That's what they say to you. So all I can really do on broadcasts like this is really give out information and knowledge and try to keep in focus because the Internet, too, is designed to have you, your thoughts scattered in a billion directions, data overload, an overload really which most of it which has nothing to do or it's simply the fallout of the progression, as they call it, of the system. It's just the fallout, the, the scattering of, of the, the fallout that, that you're taking up in bits and bytes. So you've got to stay on, on, on course and realize what, what's happening. And then everyone knows across the world now, I think, uh, that unless people get rid of these uh, independent uh, central private bankers who are, form the central banks of each country, um, and literally lend to the nation when it should be the other way around, when the country should be printing up their own money debt-free, as been done before, and it worked fine. Canada was a great example of that before the, the boys were sent in to destroy it. So unless that was done, you don't have a snowflake's chance in hell of changing anything. 
everybody is corruptible, and the big boys know that too. Uh, they, they hire guys all the time to get on board to rule over the sheep, and that's what we're seeing today. Now, here's an example of trying to get folk indignant, and this article is, is spot on with what it says. It says, corrupted five shocking examples of government corruption that will blow your mind. Well, nothing really blows their mind anymore because five seconds later, they're watching something else on the Internet. So at times it really is breathtaking how corrupted the U.S. government has become. But when you scroll down, he talks about the Federal Reserve and so on. He says, but shouldn't we all get hopping mad when we learn that the Federal Reserve sent billions of dollars in the bailout money to addresses in the Cayman Islands? Shouldn't we all be furious when one of the leading candidates for the 2012 Republican presidential nomination, Mitt Romney, declares that he's not going to spend much my time, he says, focusing on the Federal Reserve? None of them will do that because they've all been bought off and put in there by the Federal Reserve. Shouldn't we all be alarmed when Nancy Pelosi gives a speech in which she says that elections shouldn't matter? Shouldn't we all demand that someone be held accountable when we find out that the CBO analysis shows that $38.5 billion in spending cuts will only reduce the budget deficit for this year by $352 million? On top of everything else, shouldn't we all be absolutely horrified when the TSA gropes little six-year-old girls and virtually none of her politicians demand change? Well, what does all that tell you about your politicians? They don't represent the people. Who do they represent? They represent the same big banks which they bailed out with your cash. That's what democracy is all about. So, remember, to, I'll put these links up of the, the topics I bring up tonight at cuttingthroughthematrix.com at the end of the night. But, as I say, appealing to emotion doesn't really work. It's fine in, in the old church tent uh, uh, circuses they used to have. But today it really doesn't work. It can get you hopping mad, sure, and it can get you angry, and it can get you disgruntled or even depressed, but it doesn't last terribly long because you have to have the information behind it so as you can relay really information to other people in a coherent, cogent way that doesn't talk about the aliens doing it all. Back with more after this break. Hi folks, we're back, cutting through the matrix. I've said for years that it's the U.S., the big military machine, tax-paying machine uh, for the United Nations and for the world that's been used to bring in this new world order. That's why they call it partly the new world order from the new world, but it's not really based in the new world at all. However, uh, I've said for years when they were finishing off the agenda and standardizing the world for the big boys who own America, basically, then... um, They'd be pulling away the rug from under their feet back home at the same time. And that's what's been happening since they brought on the bank crash on cue. Because, as I say, the stock market's just a big bubble anyway. Lots of bubbles and con games built on uh, really speculation and uh, lots of optimism and shyserism as well. And uh, they could have kept it gone from there 20, 30 years if they did wish to. They could, have, that's, they could have collapsed it in the past if they wanted to before it happened. It's all done according to plan because the whole world was to go into Bretton Woods Part 2, as I've mentioned before, because Part 1 was done in 45 and Part 2 was to come out about now. And that's why, of course, we have Soros and others attending that big, massive meeting, uh, demanding a new Bretton Woods to, again, reorganize the world's money situation. Because the idea was to create the World Bank to dole it out to the world, give drawing rights to the world, and then the IMF would come in as the heavy uh, and do each country's bookkeeping for them and take their massive share and also have a, a big say in how you run your country, which meant massive austerity, as they call it, meaning poverty, as they loot everything of value from that country and because it's all, they're all standing up for private banks. Well, remember that the IMF really and the World Bank are, are just a, a, the same collective private banks that lend out to nations that run and, and lend to your, your central banking systems. 
So this is really the system that we live in today.